Imagine if you can, a major U.S. city demanding that pastors hand over their sermons and their emails, text messages, and other communication with church members. I don't have to imagine this. I experienced it. My name is Pastor Hernan Castano. For 20 years, I've ministered at a Houston church called Rios de Aceite, or Rivers of Oil. Our congregation is primarily made up of first- and second-generation immigrant families from Central America and South America. Many fled oppressive regimes who had stripped them of their God-given freedoms, including the rights to free speech and religious freedom. These brothers and sisters came to America not only to enjoy the hard-earned blessings of freedom, but to pass those blessings down to their children and grandchildren for generations to come. You can appreciate, then, how shocked we all were when the city of Houston sent a representative to our church one evening, interrupting a Wednesday night Bible study to deliver a subpoena that directly flies in the face of the very freedoms we hold so dear. The city was obviously trying to intimidate us. The subpoena demanded that we turn over our sermons and private communications so officials could scour them to see if we ever opposed or criticized the city. And to maximize the message of intimidation, officials served the subpoena when church members were gathered for Bible study. To many of our church members, the sort of intimidation wasn't anything new. So many of us had seen similar tactics used against us in the countries we left to come to the U.S. It was incredible to think it could happen here as well. And I wasn't the only pastor of the city of Houston subpoena. Four of the pastors faced the same threat. Why? Because together we had led a successful citywide effort to restore protections for all Houston citizens in the face of an ordinance that would have forced compliance with the government's views on marriage and human sexuality. The trouble started when Mayor Anise Parker worked with the city council to pass the so-called Equal Rights Ordinance by adding in gender identity and sexual orientation as protected classes in the law. The ordinance posed a very real threat to women, children, free speech, and religious freedom in the city of Houston. Cities like Anchorage, Alaska have attempted to weaponize laws like Houston's to try and force women's shelters serving survivors of human trafficking, rape, or domestic abuse to house males who identify as females in their facility. That deprives women of the safety and privacy they desperately need in these situations, and it takes away the religious freedom of housing ministries that are often run and supported by churches like ours. No one should be forced to choose between violating their conscience or being punished by the government. And yes, that's exactly what this ordinance demanded. I am part of the Houston Area Pastor Council, a multiracial, interdenominational team of pastors who had stood together on issues like this for many years. We learned that, according to Houston City Charter, it would take about 17,000 signatures to get City Hall to either repeal the ordinance or let voters decide. Within 30 days, we had over 50,000 signatures, more than three times what we needed. The city's team of lawyers fought tooth and nail to keep from recognizing those signatures as valid. But when they saw they were in a losing battle, they switched to pure intimidation tactics through subpoenas. In addition to demanding access to our sermons, the city also ordered that churches hand over their inter-office memos, emails, instant messages, and text messages among 17 total forms of communication it spelled out. We resisted this abuse of power, and thankfully, we were not alone. The response was overwhelming. Churches from all over the country made their voices heard. To fight the legal challenges involved, we turned to Alliance Defending Freedom. Their attorneys helped us stand our ground against the subpoenas, clearly unconstitutional demands, and in time, the Texas Supreme Court ruled that we had more than enough signatures to put the ordinance to a vote. Finally, the people of Houston had a chance to vote on the ordinance, to decide whether to give away our freedom and that of our children in favor of a radical new orthodoxy. At the end of the day, over 60% of voters rejected the ordinance, agreeing with us that freedom, especially the freedom to disagree about important matters, it's worth defending. These are times for us to stand, 
not to sit idly by and watch while the values and freedoms that make this nation great are taken away. It takes courage, determination, and love for our neighbors to stand when others are shrinking in fear. But standing, it's more than a thought. It's more than a desire. Standing means taking action. Take action to defend your God-given freedoms today by visiting adflegal.org slash stand for freedom. You can also subscribe to this channel on YouTube and follow Alliance Defending Freedom on Facebook to learn more.